Hello again, how is it going? I have got another updated deck guide for Twisted Fate and Ezreal as of patch 1.8, Call of the Mountain if you want to call it. Ah, this deck is still pretty solid. It's performing well for me, it's helped me to climb from Diamond 4 to Diamond 2, dropping a few games here and there as it is. It's quite tough and competitive at the moment to be climbing through Diamond. So boasting a 17 and 10 win rate isn't exactly that bad at all. I'm really happy with how it's been performing. Some games do come down to, you know, uh, finding some pretty decent uh, plunders sometimes nabs if you want to call it but outside of that you still do some pretty similar stuff you just kind of level up Ezreal you play your Rexes and sometimes just win the game uh, not much has changed for the list I'm preferring right now to cut pilfered goods altogether in replace of static shocks mostly so I can have more consistent card draw more consistent cycle through the deck finding the cards that I actually really need and sometimes pilfered goods you don't exactly nab the best cards here and there I do believe Black Market Merchant just provides enough value in the pilfering of cards, as well as like Yordle Grifter, which is still a pretty amazing card. Until things change, until Ezreal gets reworked, I still believe this is a very powerful deck. You know, I take wins off certain decks, I also lose to the same decks, but it has a pretty good spread. I wouldn't say there's anything that really counters us too much. Uh, with argument, maybe you can say kind of the uh, the Noxus Bilgewater more heavily burn variant decks have a pretty good matchup, but I still manage to pick up wins against them. So with argument, I'd say this is still a decent deck for climbing, all around good spread. As I said, cards are relatively the same. So if you're kind of on a budget and you're considering like what decks to play right now and you were playing this in the past, consider playing it still. You're going to find some wins. You're going to climb the ladder. It's going to be no problem. I'll give you a quick deck summary. Although I've done this quite a lot in the past, but for a refresher, so you guys understand, three Riptide Rex makes this deck really insane, it makes Bilgewater in general really insane, and the ability to level up Ezreal in a snap is quite insane, and against aggro decks, you sometimes play a Rex eventually and just beat them down. This deck also does have the ability to play quite, quite aggressive too, which is really good hands sometimes for certain matchups. Uh, two Zaps, more card draw, more consistency, and more cycle. Three auto grifters, of course, for more warning shots, and we have pretty good odds of hitting the nab. Although I am running Static Shock as more copies of, which usually we don't see as many copies of this card. It does reduce our odds, but a lot of the PNZ cards you'll oftentimes be keeping in your opening hand, like Thermo Beam, Mystic Shot, and you sometimes just draw them from your zap as well. So Yorta Grifter doesn't exactly have the worst odds, but even if you don't hit the nab, it is still perfectly okay. The warning shot's gonna help you for having more activators for Rex. Twisted Fate is gonna be three copies of at the moment. Uh, for general reasons, this card's really powerful in Bilgewater, and there's no specific champion you need to go alongside Ezreal. This Twisted Fate provides a lot of support and utility that is unmatched in any other champion card. As I said, three Static Shock, I believe for consistency, I want to run it like this. Three Petty Officer is pretty staple. Three Ezreal is pretty staple, obviously, as well as Mystic Shot and Make It Rain. Uh, this variant, I will be using Dreadway at the moment, just for more, aggress uh, more aggression, more make it rain value and the ability just to kind of provide more bodies on board. In the past, I've opted to not run Dreadway Deckhand, but right now, especially when we're versing kind of like the Build War Noxus decks, the kind of, uh, uh, sorry, the uh, ag ag aggro Nightfall decks, Dreadway Deckhand gets a little bit better. Sometimes they'll drag your keg because they're threatened by it and it provides like a chump blocker in a sense. Three Merchants, three Jacket Butcher. In the past, I've also considered cutting Butcher from certain decks, but because we've kind of, we want to be able to play quite aggressively on the board early against some of the solo early and soul decks, which mind you, not the worst matchup into a really and soul at all. Actually, I prefer playing the Ezreal deck against them. But yeah, Butcher right now feels really strong. Uh, two warning shots and three thermo beam wraps up the deck list now i will give you a brief description of a mulligan and what i think is going to help you to achieve the highest chance of winning from the opening hand so in terms of the mulligan you can straight up right now we won't be keeping reptide rex in any of our opening hands uh you'll usually just draw into it by the time you need it so never keep that it's pretty obvious right i mean we always look for a curve we look for productive plays to make against slower matchups we really want to hit that butcher into a two drop into a three drop if you are an attacking odds which is a great keep all around anyway but if you haven't got a two drop you can still consider keeping it a three drop even if you if you have a one drop already if you don't hit the two drop, it's going to be okay. You'll still have a decent play on turn three and Petty Office is pretty crazy all around keep. However, I wouldn't keep it if we're on attacking evens. Keep that in mind guys, attacking even and I have no one drop. Do not keep the Petty Officer then. Look for the curve, Butcher, 
for about a decade, pretty often sounds really great. You won't oftentimes get that kind of hand though. So outside of that, keeping cards like Make a Rain, Mystic Shot are going to be quite useful in a lot of matchups. However, keeping Merchant alongside a Warning Shot is generally just a pretty powerful play. Also keeping Thermo Beam against decks that are going to be playing an early board is going to be quite relevant. Plus it also boosts your Yordle Grifter odds later in the game. You can keep Twist of Fate oftentimes if you have a decent curve already, like I explained before. If you're curving out, you can consider keeping some of these four drops. I also really like Yordle Grifter against other Bilgewater decks. Um, the person who has the most Yordle Grifters wins, especially in like the mirror matchup, Yordle Grifter can provide you a lot of, of value in a card, but you won't necessarily keep these four drops unless you already have a curve. However, if you've got decent early game plays, which oftentimes you will, let's say you have like a Make It Rain and a Decan, I would probably consider keeping the Auto Grifter in those matchups I just stated, like the Mirror matchup, other Bilgewater decks, unless they're really fast. So in that example, I guess against Pirate, Aggro, or however you want to call it, you probably still just kick it. Uh, Make It Rain is going to provide you a lot of value in a lot of matchups. It's a worthwhile keep oftentimes, especially against Knife or Aggro. Make It Rain nets you a ton of value. Never keep the warning shot unless you have the butcher or the merchant in the hand. Um, there's no reason to really be keeping it. It's something that you want to draw into later. Um, you can come, sometimes keep cards like Static Shock too if you have a decent curve already and you're versing like Nightfall Aggro specifically or decks that you think will hit good value. But in general, um, there won't be much reasons for you to keep Ezreal unless it's a matchup where you kind of, it won't get punished and you'll be able to play it for tempo and hit their face with it. Oftentimes against like Aurelian Soul decks, the Ezreal can sometimes go unchecked, so feel free to keep it there. But as of recently, I'm starting to see a shift in Aurelian Soul decks. I think Demacia, uh, or, uh, Targon is starting to become like the trend, and they're running like single combat and more of a mid-range deck with Leona. So keeping Ezreal is probably not as relevant. Thermo Beam is going to be a lot more relevant in that matchup. That should wrap up this deck summary. The deck mulligan i just want to add if you guys are new here consider subscribing i am also streaming over on twitch uh, regularly we stream on monday tuesday friday and saturday feel free to come check me out 3 30 p.m adt time soon you guys have a fantastic day let's have a few games here so you can get a bit of a you know a feel for the deck understanding you can see the examples the gameplay and yeah i will see you soon good luck on ladder noobs never cry he made it to Masters, guys. We'll see him soon back in Masters. You'll see me soon back in Masters, too. Good hand. I'll keep it. I have my He's number one in his region? Who is this? Grap? NNC. Noobs never cry. He's zero LP though. He's he's zero he's zero LP. Oh Nick, Nick, yeah, dude. Nick, man. Poros are kind of useless. They can't they don't do anything against fearsome. I'm guessing you're in America right now. I'll be back there soon, hopefully. Hopefully. Oh, dude, you're value blocking. Oh, dude, come on. Show me that value block. You know I've got Twist of Fate coming up. So if you open attacks, How greedy should I be, guys? Like, Twist of Fate looks really good here. I shouldn't be too greedy. Or should I be? Ah, oh, dude. Ah. Oh. Oh, oh, I don't know. If I don't develop Twist of Fate, he'll just attack me. But if I develop Twist of Fate, he'll develop. Yeah, we always just red card here. No matter what, like. He would have attacked there. He would know that Twist of Fate's a possibility. Oh, never mind. Ugh. Oh, dude! Wind Chicken! Pog you! Uh, we got a rematch and he switched his decks and now we have a very unfavorable matchup. Lol. Oh, let's get the, uh, let's get the warning shot. Fuck my ass. Alright. 
I probably should have passed here, actually. Nah. Glad we didn't. The My Hero Academia notification is sick. Thank you, man. Thank you. Signing out, bros. Good night, all. Uh, thank you, McDonald's. Thanks again, Wind Chicken. Pog you. Oh, you also do get access, Wind Chicken, to some free stickers. Personalized stickers. So if you go, I'm not sure if you're on phone or on um, desktop, but if you're on desktop, there it is. There it is. You get that kind of stuff. Okay, he never blocks me. I'm happy where I'm at. The YouTube's doing pretty well. I should be kind of like focusing on that as well, as much as I can. As of recently, I haven't uploaded onto the YouTube channel because like, I don't really know what to upload. I've got ideas written up, but I'm kind of just hanging out to reach masters. Really just hanging out to try and reach masters at the moment. There's a right way to do this turn and there's a wrong way to do this turn. What's the right way to do this turn? I think it's the gold card. I actually think it's the gold card. Not gonna lie. Tenkua Pog Champ. Pog you. Let's see if he commits the uh, Ranger's Resolve here. TF? Yeah, it's TF. Let's toss you up between red card. I don't think red card makes a lot of sense in this position. Gold card just makes the most sense. It forces him into like getting less support value. Do I just allow this to happen? Or do you think I should uh, Mystic Shot it? The idea here is that... Uh, uh. <laughs> the idea here is that I need as much removal as possible. So him actually removing his own unit is kind of good for us. At the same time, perhaps protecting my board state is kind of just as important. So yeah, I guess I will Mystic Shot this. It's more chump blockers. It also stuns the Lulu. That's kind of funny. I forgot about that interaction. Um. Okay. Does anybody have a deck list at the moment for this list? Does anybody know roughly what cards they run in terms of spells? I'm pretty familiar with the units. He, they run the five drop, right? I think I'm just gonna open attack. It is six cost, all right. So he could have repost here, I'm pretty sure. They have a couple of copies of repost. If he commits one, I usually get to clear the unit. Like I can Thermo Beam, whatever he plays, but then I have no way of dealing with a Genevieve. So unironically, this attack is probably bad. I hope that he doesn't have repost here. Yeah, they usually run six Genevieve. I see they run like run Cythria at six mana. Their spells, uh, they don't naturally run barrier, but they run a couple of repost and single combats. Yeah, rally, that's right. Three rallies for sure. So an attack like this, I don't know, it's only repost that does anything and then it's not exactly developing. So that's fine. Sometimes back to back, yeah, there's a, there's a few different lists out there, isn't there? I mean, it looks, it looks extremely obvious. It's just Thermo Beam, the, the dragon. Even though he could have Cythria next turn, it's just like, still just correct, right? There could be an argument for hitting the Lulu. And because, ah, this, this is just correct. It has to be correct. And then you just hope to top deck another, another Thermo Beam sometimes. I'm just stalling out for another three turns. Okay, C3 is gonna suck here. But that dragon pr promotes just as much pressure. C3 is gonna suck. Genevieve's gonna suck. And yeah, there's not much I can do about that. Oh no, he doesn't have it. Holy shit. What was his hand? 
what hand would make you would make you surrender like that? It would have to be double rally. It would have to be like rally and repost. Still doesn't make much sense to surrender. You're still in a pretty decent spot. I guess the main problem was he did he didn't hit a six drop. Oh no. I'm gatekeeping this diamond one player. There's no way you're making it, buddy. There's no way I allow you to make it this far. So what we have to be careful on in this matchup is the triple, the triple single combat. That's a problematic card. Road to wank run, meme deck. This person's deck is a meme deck. Is that what you mean, Delacroix? I'm on the road to masters. So we can worry about rank one later. I know. He doesn't have the one drop either. <laughs> and I just top deck merchant. Oh, come on. Let's go. <laughs> oh, he's playing mobilize a really in soul. Let's go. I can I can use this on my Rex. <laughs> oh, fuck. What the fuck? Oh, <laughs> uh, you've got to be kidding me, bro. I passed here, though. <laughs> he won't attack me. I would love for him to attack me, but he won't. If he knows what's good for him, he won't attack me. make any sense for me to <laughs> come on single combat me single combat me bro damn it Hitting the Rex is pretty good here. Rex on turn seven, that could be a game breaker. It's like when you yoink it. My question is pretty simple here. It's this. And then he has single combat. I can go extremely greedy here. The payoff is tremendous, actually. The payoff is honestly tremendous. The punish is pretty limited. It's actually quite high. Oh, we're amazing. Make it rain, I know. I know, I hear, I hear Tenkoa. I was just worried if we don't hit it, what's the worst thing gonna happen? I just have to Mystic Shot it, which I might need for activating. Oh.
Uh, single combat. How many has he played? This reminds me of that. <laughs> uh. Just keep up the gas, dude. Keep it coming. I do need to protect my units. Judgment! <laughs> Doesn't help me activate my cards. I need like something to connect to. Oh, we're connecting. I should always play the one that's cheaper, right? Might need to thought four mana banked up. Yeah. a little bit sad but at least I have the four mana backed up <laughs> this isn't looking too hot for you for me nah dude we have a seven mana reptile rex where we we missed out we missed our uh, procs but I have them a beam What makes me a little bit concerned is the fact that I do not have a, uh... Like, we always clear this. Come hither, you beasts of glory. Okay, so we can definitely play Aurelion Soul next turn. Pretty sure we just Thermo Beam this still, though. I can sometimes clear the Aurelian Soul if he plays it though. His judgment that we stole is disgusting. Oh, he's not healing up his Aurelian soul, guys. He must have another one in hand. Okay. Looks pretty obvious, right? I think I might play this first. Just for a little bit of extra damage. I would clear the Aurelian Soul. I'm sure that's enough though. What's he gonna play this turn? Maybe another Aurelian Soul would be great to see. Living Legends. They're all fleeting. He has no Aurelian Soul in hand. What can he hit here? You can hit a you can hit a wide board.
Okay. So he's got six mana. He's got nine mana to work with. He can still obliterate my board, right? I'll pass here for now. He's going to play these cards. Like, he's not going to open attack. I usually get the value from the block. Fakey, is this still buggy to sync in my Rintero account with Mobilitics? What do you mean, Tenkua? Fakey, is it still buggy to sync in my Rintero account? Yeah, it feels kind of buggy to me, not going to lie. He can't attack it. I don't think he has an answer to protect it. He can't play any of the Allegiance cards. Oh my goodness. So it's not the worst if he has single combat here when I go for the judgment. <laughs> Is he actually playing around Judgment? He could have single combat here, which actually shuts us down completely, but not really. He just clears the Rex. Yo, is that Krogger Kro Gunk? Kogel gunk. He has a lot of fleeting cards in hand. That's a good sign for us. It's our time. You might have judgment. I also have judgment though. <laughs> Ah, oh, that does nothing. He's just dead. <sighs> Single combat does not save him either. It's a GG. Ah. Win chicken redeemed. Who's that Pokemon? Yeah, we could do that. Break it up a bit. Ah. Oh. Reaching goals, guys. Come on. Come on. Thank you so much for watching the video. Once again, don't forget to leave a like. It makes a huge difference to the performance of the video and helps me to keep popping out these ideas and working with what works for you guys. I just want to add one more time. I am streaming over on Twitch Monday, Tuesday, Friday, and Saturday at 3.30 p.m. AEDT time zone consistently. I sometimes stream on off days as well. Come over, come give me a follow, come jump in the chat. Um, if you have any questions about Runeterra or anything in general, you know, you'll find me there, having a good time, climbing ladder, teaching decks. Uh, you guys have a fantastic day. I will see you next time.